What's up guys? It's Missy. I'm back with another SimCity build a video. Today we're going to be doing a contest to mayor's walkthrough for a low level city mat. We're going to go ahead and start by doing the task assessment and the setting of this, the setting the scene. For those of you guys who don't know what that is, I'll explain it in just a minute. Before we begin, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. We recently hit 2400 subscribers, which is awesome. We also have a Facebook page at SimCity Build It, Missy NYT. The link is down below. You can also join us on Discord and check us out on uh, Facebook. If you want to join our group on SimCity, you will need to submit a request to join through the link down below, star Leon. You'll see the link in the description. This. Uh, there's like an intake process that you have to go through. If you're on the Missy's building guide, you're more likely to get into the group. If you're a high level player, your city needs to be not only at a decent point, you know, in the game, like with decent storage and stuff like that, but you have to be successful. You have to be playing the contest of mayors competitively each week and uh, an a, a very active member of the group. Okay. So low level contest of mayors basically the technique here for you guys is that you do not have regional maps unlocked so what you're going to do is you're going to be camping level 24 to 29 with no regionals you're going to use the technique of stacking up all the upgrades in the main list along with any last minute factory long factory productions this will allow you to ensure that you can get through the streaks without having to uh do any upgrades right because you're camping you can't do these assignments because you're a low level player it takes you a long time to do long factory productions the way that you rotate your assignments is going to be very crucial to your success overall in the contest speed choices and prep, prep com prep is going to be the three main contributing factors in your uh, winning each week. So, hang on, I'm trying to find my stylus here. It looks like we're going to go through this player's prep here. It looks like he prepped feed, which is good because that is the longest factory production item that this player has unlocked. They also prepped paint, tables, melons, ladders, rolls, lawn chairs, shoes, and corn. Okay. So, task assessment. Actually, it's set the scene. This player is level 24. They have the full experience bar, right? Yeah. Which means that if they do get a regular residential upgrade, they can do it if they absolutely have to. That is very important to know before we begin here. In the streaks, we have uh, a premium assignment, premium being that it can be worth 3,000 points, and it is at rotatable value, being less than 2,000 points. When an assignment is above 2,000 points or higher, or 2,000 points or higher, it is a main task. Main tasks usually get done before rotatable assignments, and rotatable assignments get done to bring in more main tasks. Premium means it can be worth 3,000. Non-premium means that it cannot be worth 3,000. High premium means that it can be worth over 3000 It is very important that you know the difference between all of these. They are in your contest of mayor's guide and labeled accordingly. You'll also want to uh, remember the algorithm rates and the risk and opportunities of each assignment. It's going to take time to remember all this stuff, but doing your task assessment before you begin will help you remember. Trust me. If you guys are not doing your task assessments, then you're just hurting yourself really okay so this player is also practicing the contest of mayor's math which is awesome because this is going to help him be successful a lot more quickly that being said the Paris here we're going to kind of do a storyline a storyline is where you go through and you say what you know about each assignment and we kind of every every week as you pick your assignments you follow the storyline of, you know, which doorway you're working, what opportunities you have, what risks are coming up. Just simply looking at your list midway through the week without looking at any previous choices is not as beneficial as if you know all the previous choices, okay? Because it speaks to 
how your week is going to continue. That being said, we have a main over 2,000 points assignment. It is non-premium, okay? It cannot be worth 3,000 points, and the opportunity is good. That being said, when you are in the list format, okay? Anything over 1,500 points gets marked with an up arrow on value and an up arrow on value opportunity, which would be the first two arrows here next to the delivery to Paris. Task versus task comparison is formula two. That is different. Right now we're doing the list formula. That being said, we have a premium tables at main task value that also brings good opportunity. Therefore, three up arrows. Okay. The next one here is a main non-premium limited. That is what the L stands for. What this means is by the time you, or that this assignment will eventually run out. Once he maxes out all of his dozer, this assignment will you know, no longer be able to be done. Because this assignment requires so many pieces and has such a high algorithm rate, this assignment you want to get done as soon as possible. Uh, get as, as much of your land unlocked before you get to Mega as soon as you can because these pieces are not easy to obtain. Whereas Mountain and Beach, they're super easy to obtain and they're always worth 2,500 points. So you want to save those for Mega, okay? The next one is a rotatable. So it's below 2,000 points. It is non-premium and it is limited time, which is what the LT stands for. What this means is that it is a war assignment. Right? So it can only be done during war or on the monster, making it limited time, making it more priority than something that is not limited time. So it's very important that you guys label these properly. The next one is a rotatable premium limited time war deliveries. Okay. We then have a no touch. He should have marked these non-premium or premium, but basically no touch non-premium on the war on the, or sorry, on the monster. Um, at this value, we do not touch the monster. Because of the high algorithm rate, it will only continue to come back. And given that you can only do it while it's there, it's just problematic. So if it's below 2,000 points, it's not taking up one of your main tasks. Therefore, there's no sense in doing it. The keys is a rotatable, non-premium LR. Now, what this means is last resort rotatable. So at the end of your your main tasks before streaks so the first 40 assignments that you do is your your main week okay at 20 at 20 assignments remaining is when you want to either begin the streaks or start really thinking about beginning the streaks because you have six total streaks in mega at four tasks each you have a total of 24 assignments that need done in order to complete all of the streaks that being said if you use all 15 tickets, you only have nine tasks remaining where you can still, um, you can still do the, the streaks. That being said, you want to make sure that if you have not gotten in your upgrades or long factory productions, that you use some of these last resort rotatable options as an uh, alternative to bring those in. Now, why do we not rotate these before, like just before the streaks or during the week? Why do we only rotate them just before the streaks? Because of their high algorithm and their value. If the keys was higher, let's say 1600 or higher, it would then be taking up a good points value on our list and we would want to do it to open up that value opportunity. But at 1200, we always mark it as LR, okay? Now we have a rotatable premium on the VU. Now this one comes with a risk. Because of its value, it's 1000 points, meaning the game will usually try to level you out. So you're usually gonna get a 3000 point assignment in return, which is great and all. But if you don't have a lot of upgrades in your list, then you run the risk of it being a high upgrade that you cannot do, which would not be great. So you wanna be very careful when you rotate this assignment that you either have some upgrades in your list of low value or you have other higher valued assignments in your list. Not too high, obviously, but like, let's say there are things that you can't do, like a 2,500 monster or something, uh, 2,400 feed, and you're not taking downtime right now, then that would be okay, all right? 
Next one here is a no-touch regular residential. Now he does have the experience to do this, but at this value, it really doesn't make sense to, to open up that doorway. So we most likely will leave this no-touch and it is non-premium. Then we have a no-touch non-premium on the design challenge and a rotatable non-premium limited Epic projects. So Epic projects, they can only be done when you have fully upgraded regular residential homes. For a player who's camping, eventually you will run out, right? At this value, we will likely not do it, but if we have to, we, we will. If you're close to the streaks, you should not at all do this because it has a 12 hour cooldown on it. Meaning that if you do this assignment and it continues to come back, then goes on a cooldown, you could fail the streak. So try not to do the epic near uh, the streaks. Okay, so starting with this, obviously it comes down to the Paris over the tables, right? Now they all, they have three up arrows. So if you follow the, the math formula, we would continue on with formula two. Now formula two, we would erase all of the arrows. And now we're comparing this task versus the tables task. Which one is higher in value? Paris. So Paris would get an up arrow and the tables would get a down arrow because now we're comparing them against each other, not the whole list. Paris would get the value opportunity up arrow. So by doing the 2400 over the 2000, we open up a better place value in our list. So tables would get another down arrow, Paris would get another up arrow. Which one brings better opportunity? They both bring pretty equal opportunities, so they both get an up arrow. That being said, we would continue on with our math. Which one has better algorithm, risk, uh, what's going on in your game that would make something be more important than the other? Being how it's our first assignment, we can pretty much conclude that the Paris is going to be the right choice as it has a minimum of three up arrows, right? Okay. So it looks like he went through, he did the value difference being 360 points. Value, um, not really sure what that is. He's V question mark. Oh, VP, value, value possibility, that's what that says. So the value possibility on tables, um, it can't be worth 3,000 points even though we mark it as premium. Paris can be worth 2,400. Technically, I'm, I've seen tables worth probably 2,000 to 2,400. So that you would pretty much just kind of ignore at this point. The type of task, it is, they're both main tasks. Okay, that's what the M stands for. And the history is, uh, there is no history. We haven't done anything yet. So there's that. There's nothing going on in the game that would make one more important than the other. The downtime, they're, the tables are prepped. Paris comes with a little bit of downtime locating items, but with that value difference, we would do Paris. Then we have algorithm. Paris has medium, tables have low, and then we have risk. Both have a low risk. So the math was correct here. All right, so he does Paris. Now he gets a 1600 premium textiles. Now at this value, we would pretty much not do this. We really don't want to uh, open up the possibility of this returning, but it's only for one round. If we end up in a situation where we absolutely have to do this, we will. Like if we run out of a lot of place values, but right now, no. The next choice would come down to the tables versus the next highest in the list, which would be the value uh, or the common war attack. So tables would be obvious. It's 400 higher and it's premium. Now we have a 1680 on ladders, which is premium and a 1680, or sorry, a 1600 war attack. Now here's the thing, okay, war attack is limited. Ladders, not so much. War attack, it, we are in war, okay, so there's that. And then we have the uh, ladders. I don't know, I can't remember what he had prepped in his store, but I don't know if it was ladders or not. Because war is still going on for quite some time, either choice would have been okay. If he did not have ladders prepped, I would have went with the war though. Okay, so he ended up doing the dozer. So he had that, so that's correct, that's fine. Now he gets the repair. Now repair has a high algorithm rate. However, because of its value, it's at main task value. So we would go ahead and do that. 
Now he gets expand city area again. We can pretty much conclude that this is always going to be in your list until you get these land expansions done. They don't open up good opportunity at all. It's more so just to bank in on 2,000 points and just get some storage cleared up kind of thing. So now we're back to the, the ladders versus the uh, war upgrade. Um, another thing that you would want to consider here under these circumstances is that war delivery. Now that war delivery, the value possibility on that war delivery is actually 3,000. That being said, if it was me, I would go with the war delivery. Okay, I'm sacrificing 100 points, but we don't have a whole lot of really high valued assignments. That one is actually a real premium, okay? Shop productions and, and factory productions are not actually real premiums. They cannot actually be worth 3,000 points. The only one that can is electrical. That being said, that's why we added the value possibility to the equation, okay? So I would have went with the war deliveries here. Okay, so he does the, exp okay, so technically, yes, that was right. If he can do another expand city, that's fine. So here he does the math. He's got a 1680 on hammers, 1680 on ladders, 1600 on techs, 1600 on uh, common war attack, and a 1500 on uh, the war deliveries. So he's got a rotatable premium marked on everything besides the common war attack, which is technically correct, two of which are limited time. I'm assuming the side arrow means okay opportunity and the up arrows mean good opportunity. Uh, then we would go to a task versus task comparison. Okay, so which one's the highest in the list? Well, these are all right around the same value, right? Given that it really comes down to whatever he has prepped in his hardware store versus that war deliveries because it's, it can be worth 3,000 points. So it looks like he has ladders prepped. My guess is he's probably going to do the ladders. Uh, so it looks like he's got, oops. There's no history. They're all rotatable. He doesn't have anything marked on value possibility. If you, if you guys look at your contest to mayor's guide, it says right there on there, there's a, like a description section, there's a risk section and algorithm right there in the description. Even when it's marked something that says premium versus non-premium or whatever, it says in that description what that task can be worth for the most part, unless it's like a specific shop production. I didn't go through every one and say ladders can be worth this much, but the point I'm getting at is if you were to go and look at the, the war deliveries, it says it can be worth 3,000 points, right? Whereas common war can be worth 2,400. Uh, cargo can be worth 1,800 max. So not all non-premiums have the same value possibilities. That's the point I'm getting at. Just because it's marked on premium does not mean that they all carry the same value possibility. I would have went with the war deliveries because it's only a hundred points less to open up a 3000 point assignment. That would, that I'm technically was a mistake, but that was more of an advanced players analysis going just based on premium versus non-premium value and opportunity by looking without doing the math, 100% of the math, it looks like ladders would be the correct choice. They have no downtime. They're good in opportunity. They're premium. They're good enough in value, value opportunity. There's no risk. All of that looks good to go. The only thing that's different is one is limited time and one has, carries a higher value possibility. So that being said, that one section that he left blank was the key factor in how he should have chosen his assignment. Okay, now we've got a 1600 repair. Now this one's already been done once. It's not any higher than any of these other ones. That being said, it really doesn't make sense to do the repair right now. We may do it again later, but right now, it's not gonna bring us any better opportunity. So we wanna get some of these other ones cleared up. Now, the same conclusion that I came to 
with the latter, so I'm going to come to with any one of these other assignments. Now, I know that he's not going to make that assessment because he didn't a minute ago. So my guess is he does hammers. Now, again, technically he should have went with the word deliveries. So he does hammers. Okay. Now he gets 1800 on plastic. Now he has feed prepped. Value possibility on plastic is not very good. You don't get 3,000 3, point plastic assignments. Hopefully he did not clear out all that downtime for feed for a whopping extra 200 points or 300 points. Um, my guess is he either clears out the feed and does the plastic, which would have been a mistake, or does the common war attack, which again would have been a mistake. He should have done the war delivery. Okay, so he clears out feed and does plastic. Big mistake. He gets his dozer back, does that. Okay, now he's got an 1800 on cargo. This is at its maximum value. It does carry good opportunity, but given how we've been working this doorway for some time now, and it hasn't been very good to us, it really doesn't make sense to continue on with this doorway right now, right? So this is why it's super important for you to follow the storyline, because if we weren't following the storyline, just simply looking at this list, cargo appears to be the correct choice. It's 300 higher. Okay. Um, but I, again, would have went with the word delivery. He probably did common war attack or cargo. Okay. He went with cargo. Now he gets coins from 1425 and he goes with the lunch common war attack. Again, big mistake. So if he does the math against the common war attack and the delivery, I don't understand how he came to this conclusion. The other ones have made a little bit of sense because those ones are technically premiums, but this one's non-premium. Think about it. You have up arrow on value, down arrow on value for the, the war deliveries. So you've got two up arrows on the common war attack, one down arrow on the war delivery, or two down arrows on the war deliveries. Opportunity is good on both of them. So you have one up arrow there. I don't know if he did math. No, he didn't do math. Okay. Then we have risk. Eh, not much risk. Value possibility. This one has 2,400. The other one has 3,000. Value difference. 100 points. So for 100 points value difference, you open up a 600 point value possibility. Yeah. One is premium. One is non-premium. Both are limited. They can only be done during war on the monster. That is why we look at value difference and value possibility. That is something you guys will have to learn. It is super, super, super important. Okay? So that was a mistake. Now we've got the metal task for 1800. He's already cleared out feed, so... At this point, it's obvious he's not going to do the damn war delivery, which he needs to. So what I want you guys to look at here is we are 12 assignments into the contest. How many 3,000 point assignments have you seen? Or even 2,000 point assignments? Not many, right? The most has been those uh, dozers that he's done. He has really lowered his average. The doorways he's working are not being good to him. He's not getting anything good. So... Why are we continuing to work these midway doorways with low value possibilities? Now he gets 2160 on melons. Okay, so that becomes a main task with good opportunity, premium, obvious choice. Now he gets a 1600 shoes. So let's stop and assess this situation for a moment. This is a shop production for 1600. No different than when he had a shop production of ladders, hammers, Remember? Why now is he picking more deliveries? Oh, after 12 assignments, he finally caught on that, eh, shit, this isn't working for me. It just keeps giving me midway garbage, right? Yeah. So where did the math shift? You haven't done shoes yet, so there's no history of you doing shoes. So what part of your contest to mayor's math led you to picking this assignment? Nothing, nothing new anyway. All that you are following is 
that you haven't been getting good stuff, so now you're just trying something different. The math doesn't work that way. If you follow the math originally, you wouldn't have to rely on this type of logic to come up with the right answer. That's what I'm trying to get at. Okay, so now he gets that 1800 cargo back and he goes with shoes. Now, in this case, it being his good doorway, he should have went with the cargo. Okay, he just rotated the, the board deliveries. It's 200 higher than the shoes. I would have went with the cargo again, even though it's been done once, okay? So he does shoes. Hopefully it starts to pick up for him now. Now he gets that expand city back, which is pretty freaking typical. And now he's gonna have to do what? That cargo anyways, okay? Okay, fine, he doesn't expand city. How are you getting all the damn dozer, dude? Jesus Christ. So here we go. Now things are hopefully gonna start to actually pick up. We've got the 3000 war card upgrade. And now he gets a 1560 on plastic. This will be the second time plastic has come back. Now we do cargo. Okay, now we're back at our good doorway. Hopefully we get something good. Awesome, a main task, Paris, non-premium, okay. Now he gets a 1410 on chemicals. Now here's where he makes yet again another mistake. Why, hold on, let me read this. Okay. So technically not a mistake then, since he had prepped it a while ago. So that's fine. Better to do this now, actually, rather than closer to the streaks. Hopefully, if it comes back, it does not come back worth a lot of points. Um, because then it'll have to sit, because it'll be too close to the streaks. But yes, that, that, that was okay. Okay, so he does the textiles, and he gets a 2400 Old Town. So at least he's got one of his upgrades. It is a high premium, but it's not at its highest value. So yes, it sucks. It's taking up a main task, but at least it's not 3600 points. At this point, he goes with plastic, and he gets a 3000 upgrade. So here is when he decides to reach down to the bottom of his list and grab that low premium. Now, the reason he's doing this if you look at his entire list, I need some more bottom screenshots of your list, by the way. Um, he doesn't have a whole lot going for him, right? He's got these two upgrades that just rolled in, one which is at cancellation value. It would be better to have all the upgrades roll in now and then do a cancellation than have them not roll in. Um, until last minute and then not be able to do a cancellation. So what he's trying to do at this moment is he's 15 tasks before streak. So he's right around the point where he has to cancel or stick with it. He's trying to see if he can either open up a premium and start bringing in good doorway or good assignments in a good doorway, or if it's just gonna kick him another upgrade and then he can cancel. So he, Gets cargo again. Now, this will have been the third time that this has been done. Again, I don't know what's on the bottom of his list. Kind of wish I did. Can't remember though. Now he's got smoothies for 1400. Okay, there's the bottom of his list. So he's got, let's, let's assess this. He's got Epic at 800, regular residential for 800, design challenge for 800. So he's got one, two, out of the two of the upgrades that he needs so far on the bottom of his list. Keys can be rotated last minute. Repair can be rotated last minute. He's got this monster there. Coins, chems, and he's got, so he's got to fit three more upgrades in this list somehow. Now I see a spot with the smoothies. And the epic. Repair, uh, keys maybe. There's not many spots really for him to fit in his upgrades that he needs to fit in. So what he needs to do is look at his list as a whole right now and say, okay, here he's got the 1400 on smoothies. He really should do that repair because it's holding 200 points more. He really needs the points. It's been sitting a long time. He's gonna have to rotate it soon anyways. It only makes sense to do the repair. Okay, cool, did the repair. Gets saps for 2,000. He's beyond, about beyond the point of cancellation. This right here, you guys, is exactly why you wanna get these city expansions done as fast as possible. 
because see how many times it came in? It's always going to take up that spot in your list, which makes it harder for you to stack in those upgrades and makes it more difficult for you guys to get those long factory productions or any other better assignments. It also takes up one of your 2,000 place values, which also sucks. Okay, so now he can either do the dozer again if he has the pieces or he would have to do the smoothies. Okay, so he's got dozer and there's the textiles for 2,000. Now this sucks that it did come back worth main task value. However, he's three days left in the task or in the contest. It really does not make sense to take double downtime to have this damn task come back. But now we've got to figure out how we're going to fit all these upgrades. At this point, even those smoothies are for 1400. I would have done the epic only under the circumstances that we need that uh, epic to... Uh, actually, let me reiterate that. There's two ways he can go about this. He can either do the epic and hopefully open up one of those uh, doorways, you know, and if the epic will return, it should return within the time it takes to get to the streaks. That's the idea here. That is a big risk, but it's... We, we don't have a lot of room here. You know what I'm saying? We can't do a cancellation on an upgrade. We really need these upgrades to fit in this list. Or his other option is that he can do that regular residential upgrade for 800. Now that will cost him a little bit of experience, but it'll open up another spot on his list. I would have actually probably went with the regular residential upgrade as the experience is not that much. And if it does come back in the streaks, then hopefully it will be worth more points. Um, at this point, my guess is easy went with smoothies. So here it says too close to streaks for epic, which I just explained why it usually would be too close. But we gotta fit all seven upgrades with this damn land expansion because if the land expansion comes back in the streaks, that would suck. Um, saying that it even can, I don't even know if it even can come in streaks to be honest with you then we've got chemicals that can't be touched you so basically he's got coins repair keys epic regular residential and smoothies okay so he can go and try the let's see here he can try the smoothies first and see what happens okay so that that was a mistake this was a big big mistake this was the last thing he should have picked it was way too close and it was way too much downtime okay not a good plan <sighs> okay so now he's got the repair again for 1600 um I mean, he really needs those, those 200 points, but he really does need to get these upgrades in. So I would probably rotate the repair and the keys a little closer to the streaks, being how they keep coming back, right? So I would have went with smoothies here. Okay, he did smoothies. Now he gets there. At least there's this damn upgrade. One of them anyway. Sucks that it's so high, but whatever. So now we've got one, two, three. Four, five, so what, two more, I think? Okay. So now he does repair again. I probably not, I probably would have done the coins because coins gives you a little bit more wiggle room usually and you've already done repair twice. We can do the repair a little closer to the streaks. Coins usually gives you six rotations for it returns. It's not that much less than the repair that's been done multiple times. Okay, so now he gets VU, metal again, cargo again. See, it's just going to keep eating away at your points. Here, you did the lawn chairs. I would have done the coins to work a different doorway. We got to get these upgrades in. Normally, we would not do this, but following a storyline of what's been going on this week, it only makes sense. Okay, now we've got a 1560 on minerals. Pair again for 2,000 ounce at main test value, so okay, fine, yeah, you can do it, but 
essentially we really need this other upgrade to come in. So, you did not. You did not just do that. Oh my god, are you fucking kidding me? This will be the third time! You're four tasks before the streaks. You only have two damn days left. You don't have your upgrades. You just took double downtime? I think my head popped. I'm pretty fucking sure. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be bald by the time I get done training these people. Oh my God. What the hell is wrong with you? What on the planet would make you think that that was a good idea? Okay, let's go through this. Pros and cons. I'm waiting for a pro. Where, where, where is the benefit to doing this? Oh, you get 2,000 whopping points? Ugh. What if it keeps coming back? It'll be the third time it's been here. That's a lot of downtime for a low-level player. I mean, you only got two damn days left. You don't have feed secured. You don't have your other upgrades. You don't have glass secured. Think about it. One, one, one feed assignment for two rounds. That's 10 hours of your time remaining. Gone. Poof, 10 hours for one assignment. For a feed task. You got two days and 19 hours remaining. You're four tasks before the streaks and you take double downtime on techs. <sighs> This ought to be good. I don't give a shit. That is the stupidest thing ever, okay? Okay, let me, let me tell you why this is stupid. Who cares how many texts you had prepped? It's not about the time it takes right this minute. That's not the only thing that matters. It's about the time that it's gonna take if it returns. Over and over and over. See my point? I hope you get it in the streaks. I haven't looked through your, your week, obviously. But I hope you do. I hope you get smacked every damn freaking streak. Jesus Christ. These people are going to be the death of me, y'all. <sighs> Paris, wood, wood again. 14. What the hell? What are you doing? What is this? What? What is this? Did somebody bump you on the noggin? Where's the con math that shows you that this was the right choice? Value up on Paris, value opportunity up, opportunity up. Hello, main task value. You really need the points. You still have 11 assignments that you can get through before you absolutely have to start the streaks. And you just now decide to do the stupid freaking coins. <sighs> Lord, Lord have mercy. Great, now look what you made me do. You annoyed me so bad I clicked the wrong button. <sighs> okay. Now how did we get here? What did we do? Delivery to Tokyo. There's your stupid upgrade. Delivery to Paris. 3,000 VU. 1,500 on, 1,560 on the seeds. 1,920 on hammers. Gets coins again. 1,600 repair. Should have tried keys at some point, by the way. Like here. Like, let's go back, okay? Sorry. I'm so annoyed right now. <sighs> okay. Here you did a 1560 on seeds, okay? Now, keys is 1200, so that's 360. But it's a doorway you have not worked yet, and we really need these upgrades to come in, right? So, 
Here you do the 1920 on hammers. Now here, you've done coins already for this exact amount. So now you stop and you think and you say, okay, I've done coins. I've worked this doorway the last umpteenth assignments. Keys has not been done yet. It's lower on the list. It's higher in terms of the chances of it coming back. You know, it can be worth 1,200, 1,600, 2,000, 2,400. That being said, there's only, out of the four total value possibilities, there's only one that can be lower than this value here. So you have like a 75% chance that if the keys do come back, that they're going to come back higher than what the key or the coins can be worth. They have not been done yet. They are lower on the list. They are faster and easier in the streaks and they can be worth more points, right? Okay, so that being said, I would have went with keys. Now here we get repair for like the sixth time. Again, now this is a 400 value difference, but under these circumstances, you should have just done the damn keys. Now you get watches. Again, working the same doorway that didn't do you any good to begin with, just, you know, the last couple assignments. 240 value difference on, an, on a doorway that hasn't been worked yet. Now you get coins again. This will be like the third or fourth time you've done coins. Now you do the keys. Thank you. Now you get the VU for 2,000, more card upgrade for 3,000, and you did a fucking... Why did you do that? Why could... Why, 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 why? Okay, listen. Pay very close attention. You've done coins like four times. Yes, it has a higher likelihood of bringing in an upgrade. However, you are on your very last possible chance of getting an upgrade. Okay? Before you have to begin the streaks. You've already done coins a hundred times. I would have just done the damn word disaster and hoped for the best and at least banked in those 3,000 freaking points. Ouch. Now you have to start the streaks or you have to decide if it's right to work the main list. So what I would advise that you do is that you try to do the streaks and if you do get an upgrade that you don't cancel that you don't even deal with the streaks anymore and you proceed on with your main list assuming that your competition is not super hard okay because right now you're in a bad spot you've only got ninety three thousand points by the way so now you do metal spatulas planks and that's your first streak streak two is a three thousand tokyo now you've got glass. That's significant downtime. So he has one day and 14 hours remaining of the contest. Now imagine if he gets one feet assignment. That's going to leave him with one day remaining. He has a lot of assignments he still has to get through. Metal. Paris. Spatulas. Upgrade London. Ouch. So now... Now what? Now you basically have to not finish the streaks. If he cancels that London and fails that streak and then proceeds on and does the streaks and fails more, that would defeat the purpose. So now you would start with picking up where you left off. Now you would... Why did you... What the hell? He does the 3,000 war card. And now he has cement in his list. You canceled. You freaking canceled that upgrade. Oh, boy. Okay. Does the 3,000 VU. Starts up with upgrade number four. Okay. 2,800 on rolls. 2,000 on VU. 3,000 upgrade. I'm shocked. Wasted a cancellation. Luckily, those two streak assignments weren't of low value because then you would have dropped your average even further. 
and now you're going on failing another streak. Did you really? Cancel that again? That would be the second streak you failed. What are you doing? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my fucking God. You lost over like 2,000 something points. You could have just worked your main list and you would have won. I am going to go run myself over with the car now. Thank you. Have a nice day.